Kel Kellogg here. Um, I got a viewer question. Actually, I think it was a reader question. It was emailed to me yesterday. It came from a guy named Novak, and uh, he wanted some tips on trolling for trout and landlocked kings at Folsom Lake. Um, he shared he's just getting started with trolling, and uh, he was just looking for some tips that's going to put him on, on the right track for catching fish out at Folsom Lake. Um, I'll start off by saying um, I've been fishing Folsom for 25 years or so. Um, it is not an easy lake, but there are some very nice fish in Folsom. One of the reasons Folsom isn't easy is because the water level fluctuates so much and you've got two major river arms, you know, the South Fork of the American and the North Fork of the American, and both of those rivers are very rich in forage and you get a lot of lake to river and river to lake movement from the fish, kings, trout, and bass, even the catfish will push up the forks of the American at times, and that can make it difficult to locate fish. Sometimes the bulk of the trout aren't in the lake, they're in the river. So if you're out, you know, trolling the lake at a time when a lot of the fish are up in the river arms, it's going to be a tough go. Overall, for trout, the best months at Folsom are the late fall, winter, and early spring months. That's the time you want to be targeting rainbows out there. You can get a rainbow out there any time of the year, but that is when the bite is most consistent. Now, kings, that's kind of an all around, you know, the, the, the calendar kind of deal. The summertime's good if you control deep. Although at Folsom, you don't have to troll as deep as you do at a lot of other lakes, like say Oroville, where you gotta get down in that 100 to 150 foot range a lot of times in the dead of summer to catch kings. At Folsom, they're typically only down, you know, anywhere from 35, I got a fly buzzing me here, 35 to 60 feet. So my approach at Folsom is one, rely on my sonar to find fish, okay? Once I find fish, I stick to three, pretty much three very basic approaches. And I would suggest Novak or anybody that wants to, wants to get started trolling at Folsom Lake, I would suggest you pick out three or four solid presentations and stick with those and then just invest time in learning the lake, learning about the fish, finding the fish, because once you get Folsom dialed in, um, you could catch some very nice fish. My biggest salmon out there, about 27 inches long. My biggest rainbow is right at probably five pounds, um, eight pound largemouth. It's a great lake, but you gotta invest, you know, some time and effort to unlock its secrets. On with the trolling. Number one offering out there. A lot of guys pull speedy shiners. I've done very well on speedy shiners, but I'll tell you what, I'm gonna be honest with you. My speed spoons are superior to speedy shiners, but if you've got speedy shiners, by all means, pull them. All colors work at Folsom, day in, day out. Number one color is copper. Your speedy shiner, your speed spoon, whatever, troll them at two and a half to about three and a half miles an hour, work those marks. Don't incorporate any blades, flashers, none of that. Troll the spoons naked, be aggressive and see what happens. If the fish are in a mood to chase and you're working an area where there's fish and maybe some bait, you are gonna get slammed on that copper spoon. Number one offering, it allows you to cover ground and be aggressive. That doesn't work and we need to slow down. And, and by the way, you're gonna catch kings on this and you're gonna catch trout on this. So very versatile lure, um, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of doing potluck fishing, you can even catch bass on these things. So it's just a great presentation. Now, if you're just looking for kings, primarily, and you have to slow down, you went out there, the speedy shiners didn't work, your fallback presentation is a six inch slim profile dodger, like my Fisheye Pro with the tape on the back, or a sling blade, or whatever, just a slim profile dodger that you control in the two mile an hour range, and you wanna be trailing behind that dodger a tube, like one of my minnow tubes, or a hoochie. You wanna tip the hook on the hoochie with a little piece of anchovy skin. Um, you wanna run the tube or the hoochie two to three blade lengths behind the blade. You want that tube to exhibit a, a stop and pulse action. You want it to stop and surge forward, stop and surge forward. So you achieve that by experimenting with the speed the boat's moving and the length of the leader behind the dodger. So for kings, 
can't get them going fast with the copper spoons, switch over to tubes or hoochies, slow down, show them that. And uh, that little piece of anchovy skin doesn't seem important. You will double, probably double the amount of fish you actually hook because once a king gets a taste of that meat, they have a hard time laying off of it. They will keep coming back, keep coming back, keep hitting it until they get hooked or until they get that little piece of anchovy skin off there. But typically they can't get it off there when you're trolling. So that's a very valuable tip. You should always have some tray bait anchovies in your freezer. You can cut them up and tip with them. You can fillet them. You can mooch with them. They're just, it's one of the basic baits you need to have. If you're, if you're an avid troller anywhere here in Northern California, you need two kinds of bait in your, in your refrigerator slash freezer. You need night crawlers and you need anchovies. Very important. When the going gets tough, the natural bait can seal the deal. Third presentation, this one is only for trout. So we hit the lake, we trolled fast with our spoons, we didn't catch anything, we think there are some rainbows around. Number one offering, if I'm just targeting rainbows and I need to slow down, is a threaded night crawler teamed with either a blade or a small flasher. In terms of blades, you could use one of those SEPS Strike Masters. You can use one of my willow leaf blades like this one here. You wanna run that worm anywhere 14 to 16 inches behind the blade and you wanna rig that worm on a slow death hook so the worm is rotating. The worm has to be rotating or it loses probably half of its effectiveness. Um, if, if you don't wanna team it with a blade, small flashers are great. Uh, Max Lure offers small flashers. I offer small flashers. I have the most unique flasher on the market today. My turbo flashers, no one has them. The sound they put out is incredible. You've seen me catch fish on them here on the channel. So, recap. Number one offering at Folsom for trollers. Copper speed spoon or speedy shiner. If you're targeting salmon and the spoon doesn't, doesn't work out, it's time to bust out the six inch blades, the hoochies and the tubes. And uh, if you're targeting trout, you think there's some rainbows around, they're not in the mood to chase spoons, get out the small blades, the small flashers, get out those dirty night crawlers, thread them up, get your troll on, and you're gonna be yelling fish on. The keys at Folsom isn't so much what you're pulling, pull the basics. Invest time in learning the lake, finding some areas where you can consistently catch fish, where you can consistently see fish, and uh, you're gonna be doing real well. And I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disclose my favorite part of the lake to troll, especially for trout. I like to start at Anderson Island. That's, uh, you look it up on the map, we're, we're in the North Fork now. You start at Anderson Island, you troll your way right up the lake, right just past the rattlesnake launch ramp. My buddy Jim English, you know, first introduced me to that stretch about 20 years ago. Um, he's been fishing the lake forever. He calls that, that, that stretch there, the straits. And I've almost always been able to pull a few rainbow trout out of that stretch. And uh, honestly, I've had some absolutely phenomenal days up there. For kings, I've had better luck down in the main body where the two channels junction together, just out there, you know, over relatively deep water, working, working balls of bait, and also pulling up tight to the structure there in the main body and working, you know, big, big kind of bluffs and stuff that drop into the water. Remember those kings, if you can't get them out in open water, if you're market fish in open water and you can't get them, you can often move into structure, troll that same kind of depth range or maybe just a little bit shallower. And you might not be marking fish up there, but feeding kings, kings that are actively feeding, they like to gravitate to structure. So those are my two tips. Those are my two kind of kind of hot areas, but I absolutely love that area in the North Fork for, for rainbows. And uh, you know, you're gonna get some planters up there, but uh, you're also gonna get those holdover steelhead up there. Anyway, I hope that helps everybody out there that, uh, that likes to go out to Folsom and you know, be utterly frustrated, you know, when you're looking for a big fish, because Wes and I, we go out there all the time and uh, you know, we do get skunked out there, but we catch some very nice fish. <laughs>